Hey guys and welcome to Console Land. Today on the channel we're going to be starting off our retro console review series and of course the only place we can start is with the original console of them all and it's the Magnavox Odyssey from 1972. Well here you have it, the original console from 1972, it's a Magnavox Odyssey. Um, finished in a nice brilliant white and this one's very clean, I'm really happy with this. Um, had this in my collection not very long actually, just a, a month or so. Um, one of the areas I'm going to cover first of all is something that I find is lacking in a lot of review videos and it's the dimensions because sometimes it's good to know just how big these things are because they don't always fit on your shelf and particularly like me I've got smaller shelves and had to modify some of them so it'll be handy to know the dimensions. So if we look at this here it's about 14 inches or so um, just under 40 centimeters by about nine inches about 23 centimeters and about four inches high in terms of finish it's finished in like a satin white which has got a nice sheen to it and on the top here it's got like a textured black effect in general it's a nice looking console typical of the time really nice branding on the top here with odyssey and around the sides is the typical kind of 1970s wood grain effect which maybe nods to the prototype name which was the brown box but who knows so flipping it upside down, we have the labels here, and we can see on here that this console is a Run 1 console, which means it would have been one of the originals manufactured in 1972. While we've got the console on its back, I'll show you where the batteries go. Yes, the batteries. The Magnavox Odyssey runs on six Type-C batteries, and they go just in here. And while we've got this battery compartment open, it's probably worth mentioning that there's a channel selector here in the right-hand corner that allows you to change the channel that your Magnavox Odyssey broadcasts on in case you're getting interference on one, one of the channels that you're trying to use and there's a bit about the instructions there on how that's done quite straightforward. This little battery compartment closes with a solid clunk which is quite nice and satisfying. Turn it over and we can see where the external power supply can plug in if you have one. Whilst we're looking at connections on the top here at the back you can see the connections for the controller ports here and here and I'll show you the, the plug that goes into there on the end of the controller, it's just here. It can only go in one way so you can't mess it up um, and it just pops in there and the controllers are interchangeable. These two uh, control knobs here, one is to control the speed of the game and the other is to control the center position of the screen. The RF connection here for your TV out and the other thing that's on the top here is an accessory connection just here that allows you to plug in among other things, the, the Magnavox um, light gun. If you do buy the um, light gun, you get given some additional overlays, and I'll come on to what the overlays are for a bit later on, but it allows you to play that shooting style game. You do get quite a lot in the box with this console, um, and I'll come on to what's in the box in a bit, but let's take a quick look at the, uh, the controllers. So here is the Magnavox Odyssey controller. If I can just get that the right way up, let's turn that around. And there you go. So it's quite a simple um, layout controller. On the top here, there's a single button which is for reset, and that kind of just resets the serves of the game. And again, you'll see this in the, the video later. You've got three control knobs. You've got this center here, which is labeled English for some strange reason, a horizontal and a vertical. So they're pretty self-explanatory, really. You know, the uh, the horizontal controls the um, left to right motion of your um, blob on the screen and your vertical controls the up and down and the English does weird and wonderful things and like I said I'll show you in the, the demonstration video in a little while um, how that looks on the screen. The reset button simply just resets your serve um, or, or whatever it is you're doing. The controller styling is exactly the same as the console really as you'd expect so we've got the outside finishes that satin uh, white and on the top here you've got a, a glossy wood grain uh, that's similar to the effect that we see around the console from earlier and underneath is just the serial number again of the, the console uh, controller. Okay, so we've seen the console and the controllers so now we're going to open the box and have a quick look and see exactly what you get when you buy a 1972 Magnavox Odyssey. Great looking box by the way, um, very retro 1970s as you'd expect. Okay, so first thing we see here is the um, Magnavox Odyssey user manual and uh, game rules. Um, this manual is full of information about the, the Odyssey, as you'd expect. Um, first thing to mention, actually, really, is there's part of my box here, or, or um, contents, that's missing. And it's crossed out in the manual, which is a little bit annoying, but 
Hey-ho, it's previous owner that done that. Um, it's the uh, the game box that converts the RF signal uh, to your TV and attaches the aerial. And the reason being is this particular console that I've got has been modified um, so that it doesn't need to have that box. And I'll show you that in, in a second. Moving on, there's instructions about how to connect the controllers and how it works on a TV, as you'd expect. And then just generally rules about each game individually, for instance, tennis and every page after that is about the different games and I'm not going to bore you and go through all 35 pages but um, it's all about different games that the, the Magnavox can do from the roulette and other bits and pieces so we'll see from the overlays what kind of games there are when we uh, look at those uh, in a bit more detail in a second. Now it's worth noting at this point that the console itself doesn't have sound output and it doesn't have uh, colour output it relies on the uh, overlays and the cartridges entirely. Now the cartridges are just a series of, of jumpers basically and they're not intelligent cartridges as they are to today um, they purely just tell the dots to do different things make different sizes and react in a certain way depend on how, how they're played and each cartridge does a different function um, and produces different effects on the screen when inserted in the console they insert into the console just like this and that completes the, the circuit basically that then makes the the console produce lights in different ways so you can see there's a series of cards and chips as well here which we'll come on to in a second once we've had a proper look at the uh, the overlays. So let's move on to the overlays and have a quick look at those. So the overlays will basically stick over the top or designed to stick over the top of your, your screen um, and then produce different overlay effects um, according to whatever game you're playing. So you can see you've got things like the ice hockey game. Um, Again, depends on the card that you play, but you've got the Haunt Your House game where you find a little light around the house. You've got Roulette, which basically just works on you twiddling the knobs and, and losing the, the white dot half the time. Um, and various different games. Yeah, there's, there's cat and mouse game. Um, there's football games. But they all work on a similar sort of principle that the white dot behind it will project through the overlay and produce different things. Um, it's a really simple idea, um, and at the time it was it was revolutionary. One thing it's worth mentioning that the, the designer um, Ralph Bear was actually in talks with um, cable companies to try and make it a lot more active, so that the the on display thing on the screen would be an active thing that's that's transmitted from the cable company. But unfortunately, that never really happened or, or come to fruition. So it was the overlays that Magnavox chose to to go down that road instead. So they're the overlays that give you different options. Um, also in here is the scorecards and the roulette cards that you can see there, um, as well as all of the roulette chips and dice there for certain games. So it really was like an interactive game more than just a, a console game that we see today. Now whilst all this might seem basic, in the 70s this was really cutting edge stuff and really advanced. This tube here contains all the large overlays um, for the bigger screens if you were fortunate to have a large TV in the 70s. Uh, now these cards all tie into different game functions as well. So the Simon Says one where you've got to put the light on a different part of the body that's on the screen. You pick a card and you do that. Uh, this one is educational so it's a case of different states in America. So this game was actually quite educational as well as being entertaining um, depending on what game mode you was playing and what cards you were using to coincide with that mode. Now onto the second layer, we can see the second controller, so it comes with two controllers. It really was designed to be a two player game and have the whole family playing. Some more cards down here for the sports game and some roulette money. Now looking at the RF cable that comes with the box, out of the factory it would have had this style connection on both ends, however um, the previous owners um, or maybe even the retailers um, added this style connection for the UK tuners instead. Um, but it's worth noting that when um, Ralph Bear and Magnavox were, were producing this console there was no standard connections like there is on the more modern day-ish consoles like the Segas and the Nintendos where they use more RCA style connections for the RF. So they was kind of making up as they was going along because they could. That was the original console. They didn't have to follow any guidelines um, and that's what they produced. So that's what you get in the box. Um, so let's have a quick look at some gameplay. So here it is, quite simple. You play a one and two on each side, the ball in the middle, um, and each game's cartridge we showed you earlier on does different things and makes the, the dots on the screen behave differently. Um, you'll see in a second, there you go, the English uh, control knob there that makes the, the ball dip up and down and change course. 
um, but it really was the overlays that added that extra dimension and made it a bit bit more um, involving. However, this particular, you know, the table tennis was um, was the most popular of all games out of them, really, I think. And it actually inspired Nolan Bushnell to um, to go on and create Atari and the uh, and commission um, the creation of Pong. So there you go, the Magnavox Odyssey, our first ever retro review on the channel, and obviously that deserves that place because it was the first ever games console. So normally at this point I would talk about the tech specs, but there aren't any to speak of really. Um, it's a dot on a screen, there's no sound, there's no graphics as such. So we'll move on to the sales figures. Now, this unit only sold 350,000 worldwide, which by today's standards of Sony's 155 million selling PlayStation 2 makes it a commercial flop. But maybe the reason behind that was the pricing. Magnavox launched this at $100, um, which is the equivalent of $600 today, which in terms of British money would be about £70 in 1972 and about £500 today, which makes it quite an expensive console. And being as in 1972 nobody knew what a games console was, maybe it just was a stretch too far for some people. But anyway, here it is, the Magnavox Odyssey 1972 classic console, definitely deserves its place here in my collection and definitely deserves its retro review. I hope you enjoyed the review and I hope you come back and join us in the future on Console Land. If there's anything I've missed out or you'd like to ask some questions, please do it below in the comments. And also, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and come back for future content. See you soon on Console Land.